farming and agriculture is an important part of the Cheshire economy as well as the larger UK economy. Dairy is an important part of that. In Cheshire, there are about 450 dairy cows, which represents about 10% of the UK dairy herd. Dairy is a significant part of the operations of agricultural businesses in the county and as for the wider UK economy as well. Society is increasingly interested in alternatives to dairy and to meat and interest, becoming increasingly interested in vegetarianism, veganism and the source and the husbandry of their food. This has important consequences for the UK agricultural sector and how farmers respond to these challenges is going to be of real consequence to them over the next 10 years. Cows such as these that we have at Rees Heath produce a lot of methane, which is normally belched from the cow's body. They also produce a lot of slurry. Slurry is an important nutrient and fertilizer which is spread back onto the land. But that in itself causes environmental problems for water courses and for green, other greenhouse gas emissions. The National Farmers Union has committed itself to reducing to net zero by 2040 greenhouse gas emissions and cows and cattle operations and reducing methane from those is an important part of achieving this strategy. The work we're trying to do at Rees Heath is part of that story. At Rees Heath we're looking at the effects of feeding biochar as part of the feed ration, this material that the cows are busily chomping away at, to try and reduce methane emissions from the, the cows. Biochar is a substance produced by the gasification or pyrolysis of biomass material, usually something like wood, but bracken and other biomass materials, woody materials, have been used to produce biochar. The biochar is crumbed and fed as part of the, mixed with the ration and fed as part of the feed to the cows on a daily basis. The biomass is heated to about a thousand degrees Celsius and that drives off the volatile uh, materials within the, the char. And in the absence of oxygen, carbon, or nearly pure carbon and minerals are all that remain. Most of us know biochar as charcoal, but to some, it's a black gold. It's got some really interesting properties. The process of making biochar means that it's full of micropores which gives it a massive internal surface area. For example, 25 grams an ounce of biochar has a surface area the equivalent to a football pitch the size of Wembley. This microporosity gives an ideal environment in which bacterial communities can thrive. Some work by colleagues at other universities have shown that by feeding biochar to cattle, can reduce methane emissions by between 6 and 15 percent. Reducing 6 to 15 percent of the methane that's belched by a cow is a significant contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. So the work we're doing at Rees Heath is taking as read that the methane emissions are reduced. But what else is going to happen to the cows if they are fed biochar over a long term? So our work is by mixing with uh, the feed that we've got here and here that the cows are busy eating, mixing biochar with that, and then looking at how the performance of the cow varies by those that are being fed biochar compared to those that aren't receiving biochar. So the work that's been done at the other universities to show that biochar has an impact is by putting cows into biochambers for two or three days and measuring everything that is going into the cow and everything that's coming out of the cow. And by doing that, the estimates of between 6 and 15% have been established. The work we're doing at, Fe at Rees Heath is feeding our high-yielding cows and some of our calves with biochar. What we're looking with the cows is how the milk yield and the milk quality is affected by feeding uh, the cows with biochar. It works on the basis that a cow with a more healthy gut is more efficient. So if we look at the yield of the cow, the milk yield of the cow, compared with those that are not fed biochar, do we get more milk for the same input 
or can we get the same amount of milk for a lower input of food? This obviously has improvements for the efficiency of the farming enterprise. As well as improving or increasing the yield of the cow, we're measuring the quality of the milk. So we're looking at butter fat, we're looking at protein, we're looking at back to scan and somatic cell count, the bacterial activity within the milk, and seeing if that is improved. If it is, that means that the farmer may receive a higher income for the, every litre of milk that is sold. The way we're going to do this is that some of our cows are going to be moved onto our robotic milking system, which comes into operation in a short while. There we're going to be feeding them and measuring accurately all of the inputs and the outputs and recording that data and analysing it over an extended period of time. The thinking behind the increase in yield is that the gut, the rumen of the cow, is more efficient. If it's more efficient, then it could well be that the cow is also healthier. A healthier cow will mean that there are less interventions required by the vets and also a lower input of antibiotics and other medicines that the cow might receive. This again, a healthier cow, will improve the margin and the, the operation of the farming enterprise. As well as that, we're looking at the happiness of a cow. Some farmers who have been feeding their cows with biochar report that their cows are happier. Nobody really understands how they're happier and what metrics have been established to make a happy cow. But working with colleagues from University of Chester, we're trying to establish some metrics which can show that the cows indeed are happier, possibly they're smiling more, but actually they're better than those that aren't fed biochar. And again, this is helping to improve the efficiency and the operation of the farming enterprise. We've now moved inside one of our calving sheds. At Reese Heath, we have about 200 calves born every year. What we're going to do is to trial feeding some of these lovely beauties with biochar and track them throughout their life in the Reese Heath herd. As they move from calving, they'll go out to uh, the calf pens, they'll go out onto pasture, and then when they have their first calves, they'll be brought in and be part of the Reese Heath herd. By feeding biochar, we think that we might be able to track some long-term benefits and long-term gains from feeding the calves biochar. So that's it for what we do with feeding, the feeding trials of biochar. We're also doing some work around uh, using biochar that's come out of the cow through the slurry and what can we do with the slurry. So that's a summary of the work that we're doing at Reese Heath on feeding trials. But biochar is an inert material and eventually passes straight through the cow. As it's gone through the cow's stomach, the microporosity has become full of bacteria. And those bacteria can be very beneficial to so soil health. So with that slurry that we've got from the cows, we're undertaking a series of trials to look at how that slurry is better or is different in the way it performs when it's applied to land. We're looking at indicators such as the soil health, so how much uh, bacterial activity is supported in soil that has been spread with um, biochar enriched slurry compared with um, normal slurry or no slurry and then we're also doing worm counts as well. As well as the soil health we're looking at can um, slurry that has been enriched with biochar improve the way the soil holds water. This could have important imp impacts and benefits for um, communities at risk of flooding. And then finally we're looking at the possibility of that biochar, that inert material, sequestering carbon and, s and locking it up into the soil. And this will have important benefits for the UK's economy and our global greenhouse gas mitigation targets. The evidence base that we're putting together at Reese Heath for the, from the feeding trials and from the slurry work could have important consequences for farmers with the new agri-environment scheme that UK government is planning to introduce in 2023. The environment land management scheme is intended to pay farmers public money for the delivery of public goods and biochar could be part of that story. We don't know and that's why we're doing the research here. As well as working with farmers we're working with suppliers involved in the whole value chain. 
right from feed merchants through to the large supermarkets and dairy operations, all of which are interested in reducing their carbon footprint and improving their environmental sustainability. And the work that we're doing here contributes to that. It also helps our students get understand the importance of environmental and sustainability agenda and makes them ready to work in industry and commerce. Biochar is an important asset and it could be an important part of the UK agricultural sector in the future.